Hello, I'm Chad Chancellor, the co-founder of Next Move Group. And I'm so pleased you're joining us on today's webinar. Today, we're really going to talk about the ways that Next Move Group can help your small town or mid-sized community organization create economic growth. We've got six ways that we're going to show you today that directly starting tomorrow, we can help you create economic growth if you choose to partner with us. So let me begin by telling you a little bit about who we are and why we really care about all this stuff. So we exist to create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. And then that's a specific mission. And I'll tell you in just a second why that is and why we really care. But first, let me tell you about the services that we offer. So we offer three distinct services, and you can almost think of them as a three-gear engine. They all work together with one another to create this economic growth that we're talking about. We do site selection work for small to mid-sized companies. And because we do that, we meet a lot of the great economic developers across America and we get to see the programs they run. So it's helped us build an economic development executive search practice where we help small to mid-sized communities hire economic developers. And that's then morphed into doing city manager searches and ports and airports and all that kind of stuff. But we also have economic development products, which we're gonna show you today. So we really have a unique advantage. We get to see the best programs in action across America as we look for sites for our site selection clients. And so that's allowed us to really pick out unique programs and come up with this list of six ways that, that we can help you create economic growth. So I told you that our mission really is very specific, focusing on the small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. And that's because of the background of our two co-founders. I happen to be one of our co-founders. And when I was a kid, uh, my dad worked at a sunbeam plant, a little rural town in the south. And overnight, that plant shut down and all the jobs were shipped overseas. And, and, and ever since, I've just been interested in helping small towns survive. And what really interests me now is helping small to mid-sized towns not only survive, but recruit companies in that aren't going to leave them to go to China to save a penny on labor. That's what really interests me. My other co-founder had a different upbringing. He, he came from an entrepreneurial family, very successful family that owned multiple meat processing plants in Illinois and Kentucky. And over time, Walmart put them out of business. So when we tell you we focus on small to mid-size, we mean it. We're not just saying that. We mean it. And so today, I'm just glad that we're able to share with you the top six ways that we can help your community organization create economic growth. Here are some testimonials from several of our economic development products clients I want to hit. The first is Lisa Franklin with Kansas City Power. Uh, Kansas City Power just merged with Weststar in, uh, uh, in, in the Wichita and Kansas area to form a new company called Evergy. Evergy is Kansas City Power and Weststar's merger. That's what they call it. And uh, in doing that, Lisa and Kansas City Power hired us to come in and give them four target industry pages for their new website of places they really have advantages now that they have the whole Wichita and the Kansas City market. And uh, we'll show you in a minute how we did that, but she thanked us and said we did a very thorough job and, and was glad to have our team. Uh, next is a testimonial from Kim Wilmish. She runs Florida's Great Northwest, which is a regional economic development organization from the Pensacola, the Destin area, that whole uh, panhandle up there. Uh, she gave us a plug on a recent podcast we did with her and just said we've been a great component of her proactive marketing. So we're thrilled with that testimonial. And last is Ralph Boots. So uh, Ralph is in an area, Liberty, Missouri, which is in Clay County, that's rapidly growing. And Ralph said that they were getting all kinds of questions about their labor, and he wanted a labor study. But he didn't want one that in a year's time, you know, the data would be old and stale and, and not accurate because they're growing so fast. So we were able to structure a labor study for him that we go in and keep updated for him on, a, on an annual basis. And they just pay us a monthly fee. And he's already gotten great feedback from his prospects. And he said he was proud to have us in his toolbox. So we'll talk about some of the stuff we're doing for them as we go along the way. So with that being said, let's jump right in and show you the top six ways that we can help you. So the first thing we've come up with is a risk-free virtual spec builder. And this sort of shows you how it looks. Uh, I used to do economic development and my last stop was in Paducah, Kentucky. And we had a spec builder that I inherited that was built in 2004. And while I was in that town, I think we did 11 deals, if you not only count new deals, but expansions. And uh, none of them went in that spec building. <laughs> to my knowledge, that spec building is still sent empty today, 15 years later. 
it was good bait for us. We won deals that came to look at it, but it, it's still sitting there. And so it almost becomes an eyesore. You know, uh, the economic development organization almost ends up having to apologize and be embarrassed of this empty spec building sitting there. So we have come up with a, a spec building that's basically all online. It's risk-free, so you don't have the risk of it sitting there and becoming an embarrassment or, or getting old or the roof leaking or anything like that. So basically, uh, we come in and look at your site and meet with you and understand what type of companies you want to recruit, and then we build three different base buildings uh, for that type of company. So if you say, hey, we want to recruit food processing, it's going to be a food-grade building. If you want an airport hangar, we're building one of those now, uh, you know, then obviously that's going to be different. So this is not a one size fits all. We customize these buildings for exactly what you want. And then uh, we come in, look at your site and really figure out how much would it cost to build this building? How long would it take and, and make all these interactive options? And so you can see here, uh, these are all the different interactive options we use. This one's in Monroeville, Alabama, and I'm going to get out on the internet and play with it in a second but they wanted light manufacturing type companies. And so we built this and with various options from floor thickness to column space and to ceiling height. But if you said, hey, I want a different option, that's fine. We'd be glad to, glad to add it. Let me go out on the internet and actually show you how this thing works. So this is it. You'll see they wanted three different square feet. 50, 50 rough 5,000, 100 and 150. And you'll see as I change the column space and the cost will change. As I change the ceiling height, the cost will change. We like to put these on certified sites. So if you've got a certified site, this might be the next step because that diligence you've done helps us know that our cost estimates are accurate. But we'll fly back down to a smaller building here. I find a lot of companies, manufacturing companies, really don't know how much it costs to add air conditioning. So look, when you add air conditioning, look how that cost goes up. But basically the cost and the time frame varies uh, with each different option you click. And we have pictures of what this type building would look like and, and so forth. So I'll go back now into the presentation and show you. We have two different graphical presentations of it. So you pick whichever one you like the best. If you say, I like this look better, then that's the one we'll use. Or if you say you like this look better, then that's the one we'll use. So it's important to know these are not just pretend numbers are out of the sky. These are actual plans. And so these are actual building plans, a bullet point list of what this building would include, site plans and so forth, and a timeline. So that somebody goes, I don't believe you can build that building in 10 months. We can show them that, that it has been thought through and it reduces their risk from a timeline standpoint. Now I'm a marketing type guy. So what I really like is this. We attach a caller ID web hit tracker to this thing that will show you companies that are playing with your building. So on the right, you can see we've blacked out who this company is, but you can see in real time, you would receive a report that tells you every click a company made with their phone number. So you can try to track them down, maybe create your prospect out of it. But this one here, click the 15 ton crane, click the 116 parking places, 13 dock doors. So you receive specific real time information of who's hitting your website. On top of that, we email it to 12 companies per day in your targeted sectors. And we have analytics to see also who's interacting with it from that, from that standpoint to create prospects for you. So if you say, hey, we want, I don't know, injection mold, then we're going to only email injection mold and clutch. So there's thought behind who we send these things to. Then we have a call center who anybody that interacts with that building, our call center is going to call them and try to set a meeting for you. And so uh, you know that it's constantly working. It's like a machine. Once you, once you build it, there's a constant team behind it, a machine behind it, trying to generate prospects out of it for you. Our second product and service we want to tell you about is online advertising. And so here's an example of what we're doing for ourselves. Our company's up about 42% this year, and uh, primarily for three things. We've made, we've made a really good hire within our organization that's doing us a great job. Uh, word of mouth has gotten out, but we're also kind of on the forefront of online advertising. And so here's, here's an example of that. We have figured out a way that if a company hits our website, we can then deliver ads to them from us for the next seven days as they browse 
websites throughout the internet, you know, news websites, AccuWeather, uh, sports, and so forth. So we can keep our name and logo and messaging in front of their eyes for the next seven days after they hit our site. So you figure if somebody hits our website, they got to have some interest in us. So this is not just a cold lead. We're not spending a whole lot of money doing this because we're not going after people who aren't interested. But here you can see on the left, these are actually executive search advertisements that we're showing you here. I told you we had that as part of our business. So on the left, you can see where we show up on Fox News. And on the right, you can see where we show up on CNN. So you see, we're not going to show one political persuasion versus the other. But but I've seen our ads because I'm always on our website, so I'm always getting our ads. But I, I've seen them on uh, NFL.com and AccuWeather.com and local news channels and so forth. And I really think this is a lot has a lot to do with our recent growth. Next is web content enhancement. And so we did this for Kansas City Power and Light. We've also done web work for our Networks Sullivan Partnership up in Northeast Tennessee. They were our first client many years ago. So a special thank you to them. That's in the Kingsport, Tennessee, Tri-Cities area, West Plains, Missouri, and Monroeville, Alabama, and several other ones. And so what we can do is come in and enhance your website. So you don't have to build a brand new website. You can say, hey, I love my web firm. I'm happy with it but I really want to up the marketing and recruiting. We can come in and do that for you. And let me show, I'm gonna show you what we did for Kansas City Power. So this is their website. You'll notice they're called Evergy. So they just merged with West Star Energy. Kansas City Power was more in the Missouri and Kansas City side. West Star's over on the Kansas side down to the Wichita area and so forth. And so they said, hey, now that we're merging, help us figure out how to appeal to our targeted industry. So uh, basically we built, built them four pages, aerospace, automotive, data centers, and manufacturing, and uh, gave them literally in PDF documents, these are all your advantages with maps and graphics, and then they give to their web team and they add it to the website. So everyone is happy. But you can see we go in and actually talk about all the good things about why an aerospace company should choose their territory. So you can see here, we literally built them a spreadsheet of every different aerospace company within their region here. You see that we were able to do. So we just give them all these files and their, and their, uh, their web firm puts them on the internet. Down here, you can see, we like to brag about existing industries. So these are companies within their territory. Now I see a lot of economic development organizations say we have Spirit Aero Systems but they really don't talk about what they do. We talk about what your companies make and try to tie together the whole picture of why an aerospace company could be successful there. We love it, it's fun to me. Figure, it's like putting a puzzle together, figuring out what's there. So here you can see we talk about, they build pieces of the Boeing aircraft, including fuselage for these type planes. We don't just say, you know, bombardiers here. We talk about what it is that they do and get into great detail about that. We detail your labor down to the number. These are the number of people in their region working in aerospace in some facet. And I will point out, we update these on an annual basis as part of our contract. So they don't have to worry about our, our numbers getting stale. Here you can see this is how air, aerospace companies are growing in their area. Wichita State has a huge aerospace research center. Again, I see a lot of economic development organizations that would just put Wichita State National Institute for Aviation Research. We actually dig deep and figure out what all do they do. And here you can see this is all the type of research that they do in detail all of this for you. And then I'll show you. So they took our data and then went and made this beautiful brochure that wrapped in every region that they have. So it's just a PDF brochure they can print right off and hand to a potential prospect. So I will also show, you know, this is the automotive page we built. They have a GM and a Ford plant in their area, largest Ford plant in the world. And so you see, we really bragged about all of that. And you'll notice these are gonna be different, different numbers. So these are the actual companies within their region that can support automotive companies. They have 257 machine shops. And again, next year that may be 262. We will keep all of these numbers updated for them. Here's their skilled labor as it pertains to automotive. So these are going to be different than the aerospace ones because different type companies need different type of labor. 
you'll see their research and development was a little different for automotive because you, you got Ford and GM and then obviously we brag about infrastructure and so forth. So if you're happy with your website, happy with your web firm, but think, man, we really need to up our game in terms of, of targeting and telling people what's our business case, we would love to come in and help you do that. Our next service is a workforce advantage analysis. And I just can't talk enough about this. You know, it's getting to where labor is the number one criteria to a site selection decision. It's gotten to where it's more important than incentives or taxes or anything else. And, and I've read a lot of labor studies lately that are very good. But in the study, not only do I see the good things about the labor, I read the bad parts. And I'll read where, where people are saying it's hard to find labor here. And, uh, and it's all probably true and done properly. But, but in my opinion, an economic developer doesn't need to eliminate themselves. They don't need to tell a prospect, hey, here's all the bad stuff about us. That's the prospect's job to go figure out, the consultant's job to go figure out. So we like to come in and give you a list only of your labor advantages. If there's a disadvantage, we're going to figure it out and we'll tell you, but it will not end up in our final document for you. So we just did this for, uh, this is one of the testimonials that I showed you earlier for Clay County, Missouri. And you've probably heard this in your town where certain employers just say, oh, the labor force is bad. I can't hire anybody. What we found in their area is if you paid $16 an hour or less, you could realistically draw from this red circle. We had zip code data that we, that we used to determine this. If you got over $16 an hour, you went as far out as this blue circle. So most of the people we met with paying over 16 were happy with the labor force. Uh, most of them under maybe weren't as happy, so they were having trouble finding people. But we were able to literally figure out where this is. So now the economic developer can defend themselves and say, well, you might have to pay a little bit more and, and know when they're recruiting a company what they're going to have to pay to be happy with the labor force. Next is marketing strategy, number five. So you've heard a whole lot in here about marketing. We have figured out that our expertise is getting eyeballs on things. I mean, we know how to get people to look at stuff, whether it's a website or a site or a job. I mean, we know how to do it. And so uh, we've had several communities hires to come in and say, hey, come in, look at our assets. I don't want a 100-page strategic plan. Frankly, if that's what you want, we're probably not the firm for you but I want a marketing strategy. I want you to tell me how to put us on the map for these type companies we want to go recruit. And, and we love doing that. That's fun to us. And so we just did one for Chilton County, Alabama, and this is just one little part of it. Obviously, we probably had 100 recommendations in it. This is just one of them. But Chilton County is known as the peach capital of the United States. Uh, great peaches there and they actually have something called the peach park and two or three different providers that sell peaches and um, and they want to recruit more agritourism get people off their interstate they're on the interstate get people off that interstate and spending money in Chilton County so one of our recommendations to them was to do geofence marketing where they can literally deliver ads to people as they travel up the interstate that says, take exit, whatever, and visit our peach park, peaches for sale, you know, peach capital of the world, blah, 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 blah. And so when we do a marketing strategy, we don't just say, hey, go do this. We tell you how much we think it'll cost and what's the chance we think you'll get uh, to, on a return on investment. And next, we're really being asked to do a lot of speaking and board training now all over the country. Seems like we're giving a speech once a week or once every two weeks, and we enjoy doing that. So if you ever, if you ever have things that you'd like us to come in and speak at an annual meeting or to your board of directors or do some training, we're happy to do that. In the bottom right of this slide, you can see Matt Tackett, who runs the Kentucky Association of Economic Development. They had to speak at their annual meeting, and he said we rated number one of all the sessions that they had and so uh, uh we, we built a pretty good reputation and name for ourselves uh, in doing this and had some good press coverage out of it as i wrap up you can follow us every thursday morning we have a podcast channel and you can find us on apple and google and all the big places you find podcasts and every thursday morning about 10 a.m we drop a new podcast where we're talking about this stuff we talk about how to create economic growth for small to mid-sized companies, communities, and nonprofit organizations. So I'd encourage you to, to add, our, add our podcast to your list and give us a listen. That's me. I'm Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. So you can see you can follow us on Twitter at Next Move Group. 
there's my LinkedIn, my personal email and personal cell number, which I've also got on the last page. So if you want to call our office, it's 1-800-764-3105. If you want to reach me directly, my direct number is 504-648-7716. Also chat at thenextmovegroup.com.